Welcome to the Magic and Mindfulness Podcast. You're joining me, Amy Maxwell, on my journey of understanding the world of light magic in order to cultivate mindful living. I'm so excited for you to join me on this path of discovery. So, hi ladies, I'm so excited that you're joining me today to discuss how we can find balance and connection through tea ritual moments. So first of all, thank you for joining me today and how are you both doing? Thank you so much, Amy, for your invitation and um, I'm doing great and I'm um, really grateful that uh, just before starting with this recording, we did uh, a small grounding session with Kremena. So I feel, I feel great. Thanks, Yana. How about you, Kremena? How are you doing today? I'm doing great as well. I just wanted to mention that the fact that we all know each other makes it so special. And thank you for the invitation, for having myself and Yana on your podcast. And uh, can't wait to see what we have in common and what we have not in common. And just share a little bit of our knowledge about the love of tea and so on. So thank yeah. you for having us. You're so welcome. No, I'm really looking forward to it. And also there's three of us. So I also think that, you know, that dynamic is always interesting to have different perspectives. So yeah, I'm also very curious of how the conversation goes, especially as we do know each other fairly quite well. Um, so, so yeah, so let's, let's see how we roll. And I think it would be really nice to start with actually, especially as there are three of us. So this dynamic is a little bit different to normal episodes. Um, for the listeners to know a little bit more about the two of you and also um, to share more about your connection and love for tea and how your kind of collaboration started. So maybe, um, Jana, would you like to start just to introduce yourself and uh, tell me a little bit more about, yeah, about how you got into the tea world and your connection with Kremena as well? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jana. And um, I'm originally coming from Bulgaria, but I've been living in the Netherlands for the past 14 years. And uh, my love story with uh, herbs and flowers began when I was quite little. I was fortunate uh, to have a very carefree childhood. I grew up around nature and um, I was fortunate to have um, a very wise grandmother who was a great influence on me and she taught me a lot about uh, how to appreciate and how to design tea. She also taught me about the various medicinal benefits and um, different applications that uh, we, can, we can use herbs for. And um, how we met with uh, Kremena, it was uh, back in uh, 2019. I met her actually via her, um, her sister, Genia. We were classmates here in uh, the Netherlands. And um, I attended a few sessions of um, Kremena, of her yoga class. And I was quickly very drawn to her aura, to her mm -hmm. approach towards people, because she is creating a very safe environment where people can practice yoga, they can... Uh, relax there but also I noticed how she is making a community and in this community people feel safe people feel um, able to open up and um, get the needed balance so um, yeah we, we uh, befriended with Kremena mm -hmm. and uh, later I feel that um, our collaboration really blossomed because we share a vision for course physical health mental balance and also we are both drawn to the medicinal benefits of herbs that's why uh, we decided to co-create uh, a herbal blend together called your yoga our yoga label I love that yoga label and actually that's so lovely to hear how you both connected because obviously yeah I've, I know you both a little bit more separately but to hear how that tea collaboration came about of so the, the your yoga label is, is really beautiful. And I can also just, Kremena's probably like, ah, stop talking about me. But I've also been to Kremena's classes and I, uh, her yoga classes and I, I find them so special. And 
yeah, Corinna, you're such a unique teacher. And, and yeah, I love I love coming to your classes. I haven't been to one in ages, but it reminds me to get my ass down <laughs> to one of your to one of your classes and um yeah and, and, and share that magic. And um so yeah, so Corinna, you your ears are probably burning. We've been, <laughs> been, been yeah. talking about you and uh yeah, just would be great to hear from you as well and just how your connection with with T began and also your connection with Yana a little bit from your side would be really lovely to hear as well. Yeah, well, first and foremost, thank you for the the love around the yoga, and it's definitely not just the teacher. It's 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 the magic that is being created when an exchange of energy happens, and the pure presence of each and every individual in the classes is what makes it so concrete for me. And I've been doing it for many years, but I've always said that the best part about yoga is the coffee after. But then coffee started to make me really jumpy and very mm. much um, making me very mm -hmm. mm, uh, admitting that maybe I can do more things than I should be. And there was a clear decision from my side that I need to detox from coffee. And then I was saying, maybe I should transition into tea. And quite frankly, I know in our spaces we speak about manifestating a lot, but um, the collaboration with Yana was a pure manifestation from my from my side to be very honest because I was speaking about the fact that I need to cut on coffee and those of you that know me you know I keep saying many things like that and then two three weeks later here we are and um, we're doing something else but it's called practice for a reason so when I've realized that coffee is actually not adding into the cup that I'm trying to cultivate for myself both physically emotionally um, I wanted to find an alternative that does make me feel grounded enough, present enough, but still gives me this um, energy level that I can actually be aware of what's going on around me. Mm -hmm. um, and then my sister indeed came across um, saying like, yeah, you should meet Yana. It was almost half of a, like, yeah, we'll do it one day. And then she showed up in one of my classes and I, yeah, I definitely felt the the, the desire to speak even further about her passion projects and about the fact that we share so much in common with being rooted in Bulgaria, but being mm. like in a new landscape that is vastly different from the one that we are used to and for so long. And how do we really integrate more of who we are in a new landscape? So it, we started speaking about uh, her brand, and what it means to create a tea that if you are not here, no one will be able to uh, taste and witness. And um, indeed, it was very beautiful to, to work together, to become friends, but also to see each other grow in our own ability to share the knowledge we've acquired in any shape or form. And uh, it's been super magnificent, the collaboration and yeah. Everyone that tried the tea that we've put together um, is really highly speaking of the fact that it does uniquely speak of what we want to bring up into the world. And um, yeah, I'm sure we'll have a lot more time to speak about the tea because we are very passionate Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. But I do yeah. really want to dive into the tea as well and, and sort of the benefits of it because, I mean, you've already touched on so many wonderful things, especially around um you know the coffee intake I'm also certainly guilty of that and I think um I've also kind of moved through that struggle of just like really noticing when my caffeine intake is quite high and there is such a beautiful connection with tea and yoga and sort of having that um time to slow down and just to yeah just to kind of use it to feel into your practice as well and I also just loved what you share about you know your collaboration and the two of you coming together as kind of female entrepreneurs as well in this sort of you know the spiritual community and the mm -hmm. wellness community and I think I think that's amazing and I was actually I would actually love to ask you both because you do have that connection then to Bulgaria can you tell me a little bit more about that and sort of how does that come you know come up for you when you work together and why is it that you also uh, apart from sort of some of that connection from your roots I guess but what is it about Bulgaria and some of the herbs and the properties that you that you both love in, in your own words? Yeah, um, maybe I can share my, uh, maybe the, my childhood memories from this. So often with uh, my grandmother, we were going to the mountains where a lot of wild herbs and flowers are growing. We were collecting them 
and then drying them on, um, on newspapers in our living room. So uh, very quickly, this aroma of all these herbs was uh, brought to the house. It's like we are bringing a piece of mountain. And uh, we all, I think, believe in our more Eastern European culture, believe that the herbs have medicinal benefit, also on an energetical level. Mm. And uh, for many of the creams or potions that we are uh, doing, we use these wildly forged uh, uh, herbs. And um, um, I love the connection between uh, my, my heritage and also the fact that uh, I've been in this country, the Netherlands, for so many years. So inevitably, both places have shaped the person I've become. Mm -hmm. That's why rose tulips also carries this name. Rose symbolizes uh, the flower of uh, Bulgaria. It's one of the most uh, uh, beautiful rose that grows there. It's called Rosa de Mascena. And in all our herbal blends, we are using this uh, uh, very rich, um, rich rose. And then the, the Netherlands brought to the uh, tulip fields, of course. And uh, in the Netherlands, personally, I've uh, felt that I grew a lot in terms of um, looking more in an entrepreneurial way, mm -hmm. but also pointing my attention to sustainability. Here, I admire that uh, people are very daring, very courageous. There are so many young people that are trying out and following their dreams mm -hmm. in terms of creating their own business. So um, I think here is where I got my courage to start a business, actually. That's cool. I, I, lo I love that so much and like listening to your story about growing up with your grandma and just, yeah, and sort of being a little witch in the forest in a way, like a little fairy. Really and just felt like, like that. Natural herbs and, and, and is that still something that you bring into, you know, the current, the, the way that you, the, the way that you blend the teas now is what's your connection to, because I know that the tea blends are, you know, in, uh, you, you source them from Bulgaria. Is that something you're very part of that process? Like, how does that actually work? I, I would be quite curious to know, because I, I also love sort of that entrepreneurial side of understanding how the business works and um yeah would you mind sharing that if you're comfortable yes of course so um indeed uh, our blends uh, we try to create them so they they taste great of course but they also have functional benefits so mm -hmm. all our blends are designed to serve a purpose and um we try as much as possible to source our products from uh, bulgaria however we also incorporate teas and herbs that don't grow only there Mm -hmm. So uh, we work with uh, one of the biggest uh, producer of uh, tea that is in uh, Bulgaria. They source them um, ethically. They have uh, um, also certification for organic sourcing, organic production, and um, we collaborate with them. In terms of um, uh, flavors, in terms of uh, proportions, this is quite important to form the recipe. Mm -hmm. So um, I play around uh, quite uh, a lot before creating a blend. And this is also a great uh, uh, story to mention how we created the yoga label together with Kremena. It was uh, not just the two of us. We've uh, incorporated uh, the opinion of um, quite beloved yoga friends. Mm. So we gathered uh, together one uh, beautiful evening and we started mixing herbs, doing different proportions and just tasting and um, um, experiencing how it influenced us i love i love that oh i wish i'd been part of that ceremony <laughs> it was beautiful that's yeah. so nice I think, I think uh amy we didn't know each other when we no were, um, we didn't i we, we i know that uh, we worked together uh, for quite some time but we didn't actually know each other right. and uh, and it was in the beginning of the 19 right you're 19 right. oh um, okay i hadn't even moved oh no i just moved yeah no we didn't know each other at that time but uh I just love that and just like that connection. I mean, this is what we're also going to talk about today is that sort of tea ritual uh, resurgence and how and how we connect through that tea moment and tea ceremony, which I should, I've never, well, we, me and you did do an event stick, didn't we, Cremena? But I've, I guess I've never been to a kind of mm -hmm. uh, a sort of, uh, what's the word, like an individual or a um, specific tea ceremony. And I just love that you then crafted and collaborated with other women to create your your tea. I love that so much, by the way. I think it's, that's really beautiful. Um, it was so a big lesson for me to to because I I was setting my mind on this is the exact blend, but then people's opinion about mm -hmm. no, this is 
a better formulation of what you're trying to achieve with all the benefits of the herbs. I was going a little bit more mellow, like the ginger not so noticeable, but these, the lavender more uh, predominant. But then you always need to be open-minded and open-hearted to hear yeah. about, wow, this is how I see myself, or this is how I like to, to what is it that I really bring to the table, so to say. Yeah. And we were able to get it, but people were very much open about, hey, this is better. You need to kind of uh, go this route a bit more. Uh, it was a beautiful evening. I remember it very vividly. It was 3rd of January, and we've gathered some of my really uh, very valued uh, students that were with me for decades and 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 really know me, know me, know what I am striving towards and why we are all involved in any shape or form in the wellness and what type of you know, level of commitment it uh, requires to really be genuine to yourself and not just go with the latest trend about, oh my God, like uh, everyone is doing this and that modality. Let's us all go and do that. Well, no, this is something that our grandmas were giving us when we were growing up. And this is what we can offer to students, colleagues, uh, peers, yeah. friends. And uh, it's really apart from all the herbs and all the benefits it has, the intention behind why you're doing what you're doing is a big influence on how people experience the plants as well. Um, and we take big pride about going back into the, what is it that we're really trying to achieve here? And not grasping and achieving, but it's like, a, if we weren't meeting each other with Yana, what would the, the collective miss? And mm -hmm the tea is really just a representation of us coming together and being open and being really vulnerable and witnessing our growth. And those ceremonies, they matter so much to me because they are genuine and they are very mm. raw. We spoke about it maybe in previous conversations, but it's, it's a great representation of life, a cup of tea. It's, yeah, we'll speak a bit more about it, but it's such a simple way to get yourself present again and connect yeah beautiful and thank you really going on <laughs> yeah thanks Carmela. You, you always have so much wisdom whenever I listen to you I'm like oh my god so something you just touched upon there I think is really really amazing and just important and I just I share the same value of with both of you and also this is why I wanted to speak to both of you about tea and tea ceremonies because um you know, and also just being super honest and, you know, people can always disagree or agree with opinions, of course, but I'm really selective about who I ask onto this podcast because I do see that there's kind of like this big resurgence of trends and, you know, the TikTok culture of just like looking at videos for clickbait and things like that. And I really want to make sure who I'm speaking to as much, you know, as much as, you know, it's just also who I invite in and into the space, but I really want to make sure that people are kind of grounded in that authenticity and credibility into what they do. Um, and to, and to really speak to people about their knowledge of, of things that I don't really understand so much. And, and, and one of those things is tea. And I've connected with you both, obviously through your tea and my newfound appreciation for tea, because I am actually so, still a coffee junkie, but I love tea and I love those moments of, of slowing down. So I'd really like to dive into actually, I think we're really going in there anyways. And um, I think we're quite excited about speaking about rituals and the magic into tea ceremonies and um how much of those are popping up at the moment I don't know if you've actually both kind of noted you're both nodding your head <laughs> yeah um how much they're popping up and I would really just actually like to go back to kind of uh, take a step back actually and and talk about the lineage behind the tea rituals and kind of honoring yeah where they came from so I don't know if if one of you or both of you would actually love to share a little bit more about where the tea ceremonies kind of derive from uh, traditionally. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, tea rituals have a very long and rich history, and they uh, originate also um, uh, back in ancient China, almost 5,000 years ago. But um, what I came across while learning more about the different uh, tea rituals and tea ceremonies is that they all, in, in their base, have the principles of harmony, respect, purity, also tranquility, and they all um, involve this uh, slow and uh, 
really calculated way of preparing tea, honoring the tea, and carefully presenting a cup of loose leaf tea or some, or some matcha powder, of course, and um, really focusing on how simple, but how powerful this act, deliberate act of preparing a cup of tea can be. Mm. It also makes you realize that, um, yeah, like focusing on one action and setting your mind to it actually relaxes you and makes you connect with yourself on a deeper level. So in essence, for me, this is uh, what the, all the different rituals are trying to make, like focus your attention and uh, opening your, your mind to, to the moment. Beautiful. And I just wanted to mention about it that um... I'm thinking of reasoning why nowadays in the Western society or it's gaining popularity, it's that mm. we no longer can continue this, uh, I, for the lack of a better explanation, rat race and hurry and hustle and, and all of that. Like we, we've, we've got exhausted by that and we are reaching towards mm. traditions and, and modalities that are more authentic to how we used to live our life. Uh, we are bombarded for the lack of a better wording, and I don't want to use those words, but there is so much exposure to both information and uh, things that are happening to us within one day that in the past maybe it took 20 years to digest. So having a tangible moment for yourself and having an extension of the warmth that a tea represents to be ingested, it gives a moment of us realizing all the things we are being asked to ingest, digest, and make sense of. Um, I think it's um, not a big surprise that something so powerful is now gaining popularity. I would only just say that just like any other modality, it's, it's, it's what intention you put behind it. It's not about the rules that you would create and Yana beautifully mentioned about the essence of it is to become aware to become present to have a moment that you can realize that the connection between you and nature is is there through a cup of tea mm -hmm. something so trivial for some of us or accessible for some of us and yet again we choose to go ahead and grab a mm -hmm. cup of coffee or fast or and this is the antidote of grabbing and grasping and, and running this is about slowing down sitting being present so that those 10 to 15 minutes that you take for yourself or a cup of tea can hopefully spill out in everything you do in life and quite frankly i don't think we need that quite 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 <laughs> urgently we, we need that more of, of of like realizing that 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 it's it's really the whole thing the, the things we have within us and we are not honoring uh consistently they will they will turn around and it's not going to be a, a walk in the park but um if you're having a cup of tea every day with a mindful intention of ritualizing any mm -hmm. mundane task like preparing yourself a cup of tea you can only imagine the ripple effect on all the other aspects of your life and all the other things you're doing in your life. If you can bring that presence, spill it over to all the things you do. Um, it stems from ancient traditions, but quite frankly, the blend between the what no longer serves us to continue doing, which is so obvious, and what used to be our way of living and where we can blend it together in our modern society is what we're excited about to bring mm -hmm. to people in a safe environments and, and, and really craft it and read the room. When I do the ceremonies, it's never about, oh, did I forget the second leaf? The, the rules there, I, I never follow too many rules. The only rule is that if the intention is correct behind why you're doing what you're doing, and you can only sense it when you ground yourself so deeply that you know you are acting out of integrity in each and every moment, in each and every seat. And it's just so magical because it, it creates this sensory, like 
you, you're tapping into both um, visual touch, um, smell, taste. It's, it's, I don't know many of my other meditation that tap into all of the senses and that's what makes it way more powerful yet super accessible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's just a great way to not only start your day and the day, but have a moment in between. So if people ask how many times a day I need to do it, it's like, well, how many times a day you forgot you're present? Yeah, I think I think that's the beautiful thing about tea, isn't it? It's so, in a sense, simple, but actually it's the simplest things that often we would, you know, we were all just talking openly before we click record of just, you know, it's the new year when we're trying to set up it, you know, in the, in the best possible way. But even just finding sometimes, I know that we meditated before this recording, but even just setting aside, I'm just being honest for myself, you know, just mm -hmm. finding those moments for tea sometimes in itself when you're in a stressed situation or stressful day sometimes that can be the hardest thing is to just bring you back out and what I also just love about you know your tea as well is actually you were talking a lot about you know kind of over consumerism and just like mm. overdoing so much and I was just thinking as well in a way of just you know before I came across your tea it was kind of like I was just buying probably like quite cheap tea I don't really know where it was coming from I didn't really know where it was sourced and I think you know it, it it kind of all flows together I think the energetics of where something comes from like how you were speaking about intention like how you indulge in that intention and actually just take the time I think that all creates like you were saying like this way of living and how we take care of ourselves then translates into other people and I know that you two also were speaking then about sort of having that moment for yourselves within a and correct me if I'm wrong but like a sort of ritualized moment for yourself with your tea but I'd also love to hear a little bit more about sort of I know that you both do like broader tea ceremonies and facilitate that for other women so would you mind just sharing a bit about like what goes into that and maybe some of the benefits and the things that you have seen from um, facilitating ceremonies because I know that the audience love um, yeah kind of these connection moments and rituals so I don't know if you have any um, experiences of of those ceremonies that you wouldn't mind sharing yeah you I uh, think you put it very beautifully and indeed uh, those tulips and uh, with all our products we try to encourage people to carve out a bit more time for self-care for self-love that's also why the tea is in a loose leaf tea form you cannot quickly boil a cup of tea you need to spend time for it you yeah. need to slow down to prepare it and mm. I, I love to to say that this is our this is my self-care moment my moment mm. where which I allocate for myself and um, which I try to um, to gift myself and um, incorporating um, a tea ritual in your daily routine can give um, great benefits to balance yourself, to connect uh, back to, to, your, to your life. And uh, together with Kremena, uh, we started the so-called tea talks, uh, where in essence, we create a safe place for people to join us, to connect with themselves, and um, open their minds and souls to new experiences. And in these tea talks, we introduced the um, so-called tea meditation, where uh, we mindfully prepare a cup of tea together. We ritualize this process. Um, we speak on, on different topics and we set intentions based on these topics. And um, we use the tea as... Um, as a source to to connect us mm. love that yeah i when you said about what were the most beautiful or like i i translated in my head like what are the most beautiful uh moments we had with the tea talks and there were so many times when you really don't know what the topic we put the loosely selected topic but the fact that you create a space where people can just share what they are going through or it's like um supportive slash an antidote of let's go for cocktails on a friday no let's <laughs> let's let's ground ourselves in the presence of what life is all about right now for us 
with a trivial thing like a cup of coffee. And I only say trivial because we are not often paying attention to what we are ingesting. But then when we create that safe space, the things that bubble in people's hearts and minds and spirit come out. And then I, I do take, take big pride in learning from each other. And then the talks are expression of how we are digesting all with that we are uh, being asked to, 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 to handle or transform or trans transmute. And the most beautiful moments are where you might think personally as a facilitator that I already know what will happen. And then it is completely not what you intended to happen in a sense that so much more beautiful or so much more richness in the conversation come. It's also an ancient tradition where you, you have a teacher student relationship, but it's not teacher and student. It's basically, here is what I've learned so far. Here is what maybe you've learned on your path and how we can exchange that information in a very genuine way. It used to be like now we are having books and podcasts and I love all those modalities, but it used to be, Simple. you know, through talking to each other, yeah. through connecting with people, through, through here is what I'm dealing with or not dealing with, but here is what's happening to me or here is how I'm envisioning my future. And I personally learned so much from saying things the way they are, but also making sure that people can also enrich me. So as much as I can say like, yeah, join me for this tea talk, uh, uh, I'll guide you through X, Y, and Z, but guess what? The, 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 the most benefit, I get so much out of it that it feels like it fulfills my soul with knowledge that is um, pure transcendence, if you will, or, or whatever is happening in this person's life at the moment, I've received a touch of their wisdom mm. through a cup of coffee, not coffee, cup of tea, rather than, oh, let's grab a coffee. Yeah. No, let's, let's, let's speak about truly what's going on so that it's not this, what you said, transactional relationships that are no longer, like, we no longer have that space. It's too crowded and too to fast. continue that. Yeah. Um, so the way we're creating those safe spaces is that once a month we gather and you are spot on to say it's mostly women. Mm. We reacting to, and we would love to have more uh, male presence or just basically to, to get the balance right in a sense of different perspectives uh, about topics that are dear to our hearts, but then the conversation always goes in directions that is most beneficial for everyone involved. And the fact that we have the key and the presence of everyone there is what brings the conversation to more concrete manner that is, okay, I learned from you, you learn from me. And I've seen the community, the growth of the community is not about the number of people that are joining us, it's about how we are growing together as mm -hmm. a community in terms of the topics we're discussing are not the same as we were discussing two years ago. Why? Because okay. there is a different things that are in our lives at the moment. So I, 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 I truly cherish that moment of connection with uh, each and every individual that shows up and they truly show up. This is not a practice that you can sip your tea and just, uh, uh, if you choose to, you can but often people really contribute to the to the conversation um and and i'm always amazed what comes out that's amazing that sounds so beautiful ladies and i definitely i know that you've been doing these tea talks for some time and i really really wanted to get down to some comment i know i've been like messaging me like, where are they and I'm, I'm always doing something else at the time but I, I must come to one and in the future i'll definitely get get my ass down to one <laughs> um and i was just thinking when you were speaking as well like thank you so much both of you for sharing what goes into the ceremonies and into these sessions i think they sound really really beautiful and you know, I think there's a lot to be said for for all that you just spoke about in terms of like sort of usually we are sort of rushing with a coffee and then we're on to our next meeting, you know, or going somewhere else, whatever we're doing later. I'm definitely guilty for that. And I think what is beautiful, it was it was just making me think of even just 
you know, simply when I've had those moments of connection through tea with other people, it has been like, there is something about tea that kind of does make you open up more and just, yeah, I think maybe it is in a, in a way just like that slowing down and just like, you see that even, even sometimes in an office, you know, when people actually have a tea versus a coffee, like they take their time to just talk more. And, and there is something weirdly opening about that. I don't know what it is or maybe there is no need to know, but there's, do, come around, what, what, what you <laughs> You so when, <laughs> when we were doing our research with Yana and we were just saying like, oh, how to explain it, why, why it's like that, the, mm. the warm beverage of literally warming your heart and making sure that you feel comfortable within your body. Mm. Uh, in many West, uh, Eastern traditions, they speak about, well, if life goes well, have a tea. If life goes bad, have a tea. If life, like it, it's definitely the connection and realization that if you take your time, if you sit with the what is, and uh, many people speak of the fact that the loose leaves really represent the circle of life and how it transmutes and how, it, if you go completely, completely um, deeper into the spirituality about the beverage itself and how you create it from the earth and then it goes uh, the full cycle, you, you can get a lot of clarity in one sitting of uh, 15 minutes with yourself. There are other ways to do it with a lot of different type of meditations, but I feel that the meditation, tea meditation is a faster way for me personally, because I have an extension of my being, so to say, in a tangible um, hand. And once you ingest it, and once you really, it warms up your heart, it, it releases some of the barriers that we are creating mm. for reason rather than just like, we all play roles when we are at, uh, you know, you mentioned office and I have to mention that. It's like, mm. how rarely is the fact that you really show up who you truly are in an office space and that you can be honest and vulnerable with the people around you for a tea. I think every office should have a tea ceremony to be quite frank with you. Uh, it will remove any of the, what I spoke of transactional, oh my God, like I need to speak to you because we have this and that project, but then let me not forget about the other person's project. No, how about we meet for the people we are and facilitate our own growth. Mm -hmm. And in many spaces that we go to do that, the, it's surprisingly, it, it, it works in any, environment it's yeah. just that in some we are forgetting completely what is this all about yeah thank you for sharing that I love that so much about opening up it makes so much sense and it's so so it makes so much sense that it, it that opens up the heart pathway so thank you for sharing and um yeah I I've I really enjoyed listening to this I, I knew that this would be so much newfound knowledge for me because I am just sort of really diving into tea and getting super into it and I I am going to get to one of your event soon uh, this year ladies so please keep me posted and we'll share that with the magic and mindfulness community of course about upcoming events and and yeah what, what you're up to um and yeah just before we wrap it would be really nice I know we've spoken a lot about tea but I also love uh you know you both outside of the tea world as well and the other things that you do and we're also multifaceted um, and I'd love to know, as we've spoken a lot about balance and connection, like, are there other ways that you also find balance um, with, with yourself and, and for your own um, daily lives? Do you have any other like little rituals or things that you like to take? Yeah, I can uh, mention my personal favorites. And uh, the first one is um, staying active and uh, doing some physical exercise. Either this uh, can be yoga or it can be a more um, strengthening uh, workout. I love uh, dancing, running, so keeping my body uh, moving and the blood flowing really um, brings peace to me. It's like an active meditation. Um, another important um, practice can be um, a simple self-care practice. We spoke about the tea, um, but it can be also keeping a journal or um, lighting a candle, reading uh, a book, so really finding this quiet time where you call it self-care time. And uh, we love to say that uh, it is, this is not only important for you, but it's also very important for others because 
if your cup is empty, mm. you cannot you cannot give to others. So mm. first fill it, fill up your own cup in order to be able to be generous, loving and caring towards uh, others. Mm. Thank you, Anna. I love that so much. How about you, Karina? Yeah, it made me smile when Anna was mentioning about uh, moving your body and, and, and it's just, I remember my first yoga teacher, um, she was mentioning, so you want to be a yoga teacher, you do realize you're in the, in the business, um, in quotes, of taking good care of yourself. Yeah. And it's, it really struck me back then because I was like, what do you mean? Like, isn't it about the poses? Isn't it about, it's, it's never about that. It's about how much good care you take of yourself so that you can give. And the, the whole notion of like fill your cup and then yeah. give to us. Um, lately, I'm into taking things even slower than before. I know some of you will be like, how is that possible? I, I'm, 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 I'm taking my sweet time with many of the tasks that I used to think are important and really reevaluating. Mm -hmm. Does this need to happen today? And if not, Am I okay with not making it even? I used to be notoriously known for triple booking my agenda and <laughs> running like a headless chicken everywhere. And honest to God, that's not that that's not what I want to bring out into the world. So now my mom moments of quietness is like reading an actual book, mm. um, putting intangible intentions behind each and every collaboration I'm, I'm, I'm pouring more of myself into and um, taking the moment of meditating with or without you, as you mentioned, but, but having a moment to realize like, do I still need to be involved in X, Y, and Z? And if not, how to gracefully exit and there, therefore create more space for other um, yeah. cooperations that are genuine, that are really making me smile when I when I think of my day it's like whoa I have this to do and I have that to do but more than that I want to experience my being rather than the doing part which we spoke yes of. absolutely thank you ladies I resonate with all of this I think we're all on a similar page this year and just like I love I think I'm actually going to take I'm getting like full body chills I think that you know what you're saying on about the the filling up your own cup is so important and I think yeah, I think there's been a lot of collective movement around that and sort of in the last couple of years of just like assessing of, you know, what are you putting your energy into? And 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 maybe, you know, I, I totally resonate with you, Corinna, as well, on just having so many things in the diary and saying mm. yes to everything and being a real people pleaser. But I think, um, you you know, you, you the more you're people pleasing, the more you're not filling up your own cup, what Yana was saying. And it's just like, what's that going to do? What's that going to achieve? And you're not really spreading your your fullness into the world if you're if your your cup is not full. So um, and I love that also just relates back to the tea as well. <laughs> just I love that so much. And thank you so much to both of you today. It's made me so happy to talk about these topics and you know the the magic of tea. And I think, you know, whether it's connecting with the moon or the tarot or tea or whatever that tool is I think there's been so much insight in here from connecting with others and just sharing your lights and, and finding balance and um, yeah I've just loved working with you both on you know some of the episodes through this podcast so thank you for your support and I think before we close just like to mention if anyone would like to try some of your gorgeous tea then we do have um, the, the, the discount codes uh, and the sample that people can try so we'll leave that code in the show notes and um, yeah, I'm sure that we'll be hearing more from you both in the future. And um, I will definitely be getting down to one of your ceremonies in the future. Um, so thank you so much to both of you. I don't know if you have any last little closing words or comments. And otherwise, we'll, we'll move on with the day and have, a, and have a, hopefully a wonderful day. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to uh, maybe end because we are starting uh, a new year. I encourage all the listeners of uh, Magic and Mindfulness podcast uh, to set their health as number one priority this year. And um, there are no limits to what you can achieve if you are healthy, both physically, mentally. So um, I truly believe that uh, it all starts from us. So um, this, is, uh, this is my, uh, my wish for everyone. No, I love it. That's so lovely. Thanks, Yana.
Well, thank you so much, ladies. And um, yeah, just love this so much. And uh, yeah, we will we will be in touch soon. I hope you have lovely days. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you.